and this is Emma Luman and on my media course Piano Well. It's always nice to come back and I'm so happy to see you again. And today we're gonna talk about Musical Moment by Rachmaninoff that I absolutely adore and love. And moreover, I will try this time to make it as short as possible. So this video is going to be like, for students who are familiar with Piano Well system, it helped them to understand more how to analyze the system, this system, this piece by piano system, and for pianists who, does, who don't have any idea about piano system, it's just for you guys to see how you can apply the system when you analyze and practice this piece. So we're gonna start with, as usually, <laughs> Um, with imagining every note uh, in the timber with correct movement and well for all these passages in the left hand and the right hand I'm using strings, cellos or violins depending on the octaves and for melody I'm imagining beautiful uh, voice that is floating flowing in the space in the open air and when it comes to double notes <laughs> I'm just imagining two ways, or sometimes even three ways, when it comes to the chords. And um, that would be it. And so don't forget, guys, that we're still imagining it with correct movement of sound and form it with our wrist movement, um, and this movement depending on the melody pattern. And of course, we're imagining every note with glissando. <laughs> this way. So, um, uh, after that, well, this time I decided to simply give you an example how I chose the notes for my elbow movement, uh, which is very, 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 very helpful here, especially when it comes to the last part with all these wild passages and leaps from one octave to another octave, it's really helpful. So you can take a look uh, at the score and I mark those notes with blue circles. And so after that I would play it with uh, correct imagination, every note in correct timbre with correct movement and following this movement with my wrist and with elbow movement. And don't forget guys that you always have to mark the fingering in the score when you're not sure about which one to play. I mean not every single note but in some complicated uh, sections because uh, as we know, our elbow movement position change completely depends on the fingering that we use. So, <laughs> make sure you always play with the same fingering when you analyze and when you're practicing the piece. So the next step would be playing with intonation the way it is always and making all the articulations. And this is so crucial over here because I've heard so many performances where all the accents and tenuta that are written here and so much important were not made very accurately and that's why um, the pianist couldn't reach the exact character of music because as we know if we start uh, intonate articulations with correct technique that will uh, open for us this ability to um, feel and express the character of music more clear. So every time this one, don't sing oh, <clears throat> but you have to sing with accents. Oh, and then 
gives you this like epic and very um, energetic and powerful image. And then the middle part when it comes to tenuto over here, you sing it not oh, but with good tenuto. articulations with um, correct technique so between uh, playing just with timber and then with playing with intonation. One more time. It's probably not for my students, but just for people who just watch it with the very first time. So this is just while imagining timber. Thing 
that I discovered so already when I was about to play it very very fast and I would play the whole piece and that would be so nice and in this like wild energy in the very last page with super furious tempo uh, when I come over here and I'm trying to play this E this uh, clear octave with my left hand I was always missing the note and that would be ah <laughs> So, uh, if you don't want to repeat this mistake, guys, and realize it when you play fast, and uh, I suggest you to also, in the very last bar, just take this octave, just break it between two, two hands. And you can use any fingers you want, I'm just using third fingers over here. And But make sure that you still make movements, you know, left with the wrist and then elbow right. So it would be still comfortable for you to play. So this is just a little tip about um, how to make your life a little bit easier in this season. And next step, we're gonna listen to the harmonies of this piece as usually to imagine the timbre of the notes of the sound in the color of the harmony. And that will bring emotional color to the to our imagination that will improve our touching and that will of course improve our intonation, our singing while playing. <clears throat> so it is E minor. For me this E minor is quite um, dark and quite powerful, tragic as well.
here he used different harmony. He doesn't use this one. He used a little bit lighter. and I concentrate and I focus on dynamics I saw, okay, 240 wow, <laughs> this is like, okay, my top so I'm gonna give my best so I'm imagining this first page super loud and I'm turning the page turning the page it doesn't get any softer <laughs> because it goes to 340 and well, that's not enough for him he put 440 on the last page so I was like, okay, if I'm gonna start the first page super loud, how I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna survive till the end. So, well, if we're going to our human scale, <laughs> not like a um, supernatural one, then, well, treat this fortissimo as mezzo forte. <laughs> so then, in the very end, you can give your fortissimo and that will be fortissimo, like four forte. Um, so in the middle, mm, make sure that you don't play everything mezzo forte, alright? So if it's written diminuendo, you make diminuendo. And you just, you know, dissolve it into this piano. And then mezzo forte and crescendo, and then this part in pianissima that will bring this um, lyricism this little island of break to this piece then make sure you crescendo it, it says sempre crescendo but guys you're gonna make crescendo in three lines so don't make it sempre please make it gradually <laughs> I know I've made like everything that time sempre and fortissimo but please make sure you make it correctly so <clears throat> Uh, distribute your crescendo in these three lines. This is piano, definitely. And this still can be piano. Then next line you can gradually, bar by bar, go to mezzo forte, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, partissima, and then three forte. So every bar add a little bit more. Otherwise, if you make it too loud, too fast, then you will simply not have enough room to bring everything to this combination uh, chord that wouldn't be bright enough and then it goes again pianissima to crescendo and here we go <laughs> non-stop for it till the end <clears throat> again when you imagine please make sure that you imagine forte in the huge space um, when the sound even though it's super loud the sound still would freely flow into the space so it's simply huge. It's not just like loud when you, you know, listen, put your like earphones in your hand, in your ears and just listen super loud. That would hurt your ears and that would eventually, if you imagine this sound as tense and this, that will bring tension to your hands and we still want to make everything free. So this huge, this partissima should be huge, not just, you know, like loud. And when it comes to highlighting the notes, uh, make sure you highlight the top note in the melody. So even here, they're not on the same level, but... And that will let also your melody flow better <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the music. Um, so you highlight all the tops and over here... here I don't play my 
left hand like this. I'm making bass closer. That uh, gives you. That gives music. That. How to say? It like helps you to highlight the harmony better if you just go by bass. And this third, don't play like this. That would be too damn, <laughs> too so stupid. So make sure this G you imagine closer. It will also make the melody from these thirds. <laughs> yeah, so this is just advices usually, just to show you how, how it's important over here. Um, then you would imagine everything in sound texture um, and the pedal I'm using like okay guys we all know that the pedal would be different from like it, it would depend on which piano you play and which instrument you play and which uh, concert hall you play so I'm playing on my uh, soft piano in this small room so I'm using much pedal but if you play in the huge hall and you don't want your notes would be just mixed all together you want sometimes to make everything clear so people could get the melody <laughs> even in your left hand so if you play on the grands in the big hall you would probably you wouldn't probably keep the whole bar on one pedal to clarify it over here something like this and still the illusion trust me the the concert hall will give you this illusion of um, of huge pedal <laughs> something like this so you should always balance this and keep in mind If we take a look at the melody here, we can see that uh, the melody speeches, the musical speech is so, 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 so expressive here. First we start with 6 up, uh, then goes by seconds, and um, this one, then all seconds. Actually, so many seconds over here, which explain um, the meaning of this music even more. Because we know that the seconds is always like um, asking, intonation, waiting, you know, this kind of feeling. And here... around with six and seven and seconds so make sure you understand it very 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 well and even though I know it's quite impossible but try your best at least to play twice um, and try to catch musical speech in your left hand because if you hear five and six and then all by seconds speech that will bring you deeper to music. <clears throat> Talk now about phrasing and as usually we're gonna find the limits of motifs of phrases and sentences and find their culmination sections. Um, so in my opinion one motif is one bar and it goes this way from here motif would be the last interval that leads us to this descending fifth. So if I play it
So that, that would be the, the rhythm of the music. And and over here once you start that would be one motive then. And everything comes always to the end. over there so So again, simply go by the bar, and so it starts. This is one motive then. Second motive. Third motive. And actually, also, if you, yeah, I really apologize for this noise. If you just, you know, make these accents uh, properly, then it will also give you this, this illusion of small uh, slurs. So my advice, don't really concentrate here on the small slurs. Still keep in mind the whole pattern of motives, phrases and sentences. And over here I'm making... half of the bar so Next time, less, 
line, you know, this is slur for one motif, this is slur for another motif. Then you draw another slur above them, and that would be a phrase. And then you simply see that this phrase has two motifs, and this motif you can make even bold, you know. So this phrase, these two motifs, and this motif is more important. I always do this in, in my score because it's much easier to get the plan because it's basically the plan of the piece, the structure of the piece, when you can basically see it. Because it's quite, quite hard to keep it in your mind. So, um, I really suggest it to draw such slurs. So, coming back. Now, this phrase consists of three motifs, and the first motif more important, so it's going to be the most, less, and the least. So. Phrases 
and the first phrase more important. <laughs> love this part I mean this phrasing part it really lets you see the whole piece right away so let's go so the first phrase less second phrase more just a regular one <laughs> sentence two phrases so the first phrase less then the music will always have the perspective you will always feel as a listener or as well as a performer that the music always goes always flows somewhere in the future uh, so you can feel the story <laughs> uh, you probably notice in my own performance <laughs> like I'm starting very like and then at the end give all you have It also depends on how you structure the form of this piece. Uh, as we know, every piece is going to have small sections that have its own beginning, development, and like rising to climax and climax. So in this piece, I more I play Rachmaninoff kind of music, more I come to understanding that he really like th like triple. He, he likes three in everything. For example, one phrase would have three motifs, not two. One sentence would have three phrases, not two. <laughs> and the same in the form. He wouldn't use two plus two. He wouldn't use like beginning and development, rising to them as climax. I mean, at least in this piece, he's using three all the time. He's using beginning, then rising to climax, and climax. Then again, beginning, rising to climax, climax. So basically, this piece would consist of four sections, and which section has this triple thing? So, the beginning for me is the very first page. The next uh, sentence is uh, going to serve as rising to climax. And next sentence is the combination part. The 
first part of the music with beginning, rest, and climax, and climax. The next part, middle part, gonna have like two sections, and the same thing. First beginning. The next page going to rise into climax.
you have to get the audience, you have to be a orator, and that's why you have to uh, know this feeling of confident expression and more importantly express it while playing through intonation. Because as we know, if it's not connection to inton if it's not connected to intonation, uh, this feeling will be lost while playing. This is it, and uh, I try to make it shorter, not as long as it usually takes, like over an hour. <laughs> and I hope I've said it all and it's helpful. If you're interested, guys, please welcome to go to Piano World Training Program. It's for free. You just go click over here and uh, you can see the program, what it's included. Um, thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>